Welcome to our next lesson where we're going to be learning how to make a super secret website that you have to log into to see the super secrets. Kind of crazy, right? Um, we're actually going to be doing logins now. Okay, but the real lesson, the real thing we're learning about here is inputs. How to create inputs um, in your HTML and then also how to read the values that are inside of them. Keyword there, values. All right, that's that's the big thing. But let's get into making our super secret website. Now, the first thing I want to do is just review the HTML here and just highlight two, two lines that we're really focusing on here. So the two inputs. There's an input on line 15 and an input on line 19. Now, inputs are self-closing tags, meaning you don't need like a to put like a closing tag for input. That is unnecessary. It's self-closing. But we do want to give it some attributes. The first thing I did was I give it an ID just so I can refer to it in the JavaScript. The next thing here is called placeholder. And you see how it says username? And then here it says username. Where you see this, not the label, but like actually inside of the input, that is um, the placeholder. Now I could also just say like your mom. And if I put here, look, you'll see the placeholder is now your mom. All right, but that doesn't make sense because we want people to put their username in. It just kind of prompts them, like, what should I put in that input? It's very helpful. And the last part is the most interesting here. It's the type. Now, the type of this input is text, but there's so many different kinds of inputs here. Like, one of them is, like, a number. Like, you could have it so you the user can only put a number in. So you see here, if I try to type letters, it's not working. But if I try to put, like, a 24, that works. You could also put, like, date. So if I put it here, now it'll prompt the user to put a date in. See how easy that was? Cool. You could do um, file, like if you want them to upload a file. Here we go, now you can have them upload files. All sorts of kind of fun things there, but we're gonna go back to text and there we go. Now the second one you see here is the password. Now same thing as an ID, a password, a placeholder of password, but the interesting here is that you see the type says password? Look what that does. See how when I do that, I put it puts dots in. If I were to change that to text, it would just be normal, you know. Geez, I'm not trying to save the site here. Okay. See, you can see the password. We don't want that. People are private about it. So there's a type of input called password that puts those little dots there. Very cool, right? Now, there's a hack that I could show you, but I want to focus on the lesson right now. All right, so now that we know what, how uh, we make an input on HTML, remember it's a self-closing tag. You can put a placeholder, uh, a placeholder and a type to it. Now the point is, what I'd like to do is make it so when I click this login button, uh, it will read the username and password. That's like the first thing I want to do. Like, I just want to like, see what the user entered in for the username and password. But before all that, we should just like make the login button work. So like, when I click it, it like console logs something. So let's start with this. So we'll say let login button. Eek, batoon, so many typos you're going to see throughout the day. Document, that query, selector, and let's do a hash. Oh, actually, I think this was a class. Let's see. Yes, it's login submit. So this button has an, a class of login submit. So we're going to put a dot there. It's a little different than normal. And let's just add an event listener to it. So login button dot add event listener. We want it to be a click. And there we go. And let's just console log. Clicked. Ah. All right. Let's see if this works. Bam, ba, 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 ba. It's working. You can see right here it's saying clicked. Now here comes the interesting part, the real part of the lesson. How do I make it so I can read the values of the username and password? Well, let's get into that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create two variables, basically references to those inputs. So I'm going to say let username input equal document dot dot query selector oh my gosh type and that's gonna be hashtag username i didn't make that up that is the actual look here you see that's the id of the username uh input and then we do let password equal document dot query selector hashtag password now let's just console log. I just want to console log what username input, what happens here. So like, if you look at this username input, input and console.log password input, 
Let's just take a look what happens when I run the script. Oop, password input is not defined. What did I spell wrong? Oh, I just said password. It has to be password input. You're right. I didn't define it. All right, and it says HTML input element. So what these are is, is references to these two HTML elements. In fact, I'm just going to rerun it here so you can have a better look at it. Because I think the Chrome needs a lot of See, so it's just the, these are the two inputs here, right? It doesn't tell me what's inside of them, but it just tells these are references to those two inputs. Now, what I want to do is extract the value of them. So like when I type something and I want to know what the value of those are. The way you would do that is this. So I'm going to console.log this. Watch. So user name input. And to see the value of it, I'm just going to do dot value. All right. So now check that out. Let's see if that works. No, I don't want to say that. Jeez, not a real website. And let's let's do like uh, my password is your face. Okay. Rules. Now, if I log in, you see what happened here? It console log clicked, which is the first console log, but it also console log the value of what was inside of the input. So let's just be clear here. First, I had to make a reference to the input, right? And then to extract the value, I just had to say username input, remember that's the variable, dot value, and that tells me the value of what's inside. Now, you usually you want, might want to stamp like stuff like uh, save this into a variable. So I'm actually going to make a new variable called username, and I'm actually going to save it inside of there. I'm going to say let password equal uh, password input dot value. And now let's console.log the username, and let's console.log the password. And these are just two variables where I'm storing these values. All right, I check it out. Um, hello? And so my password, remember my thing is going to say like uh, your face rules is my username and my password is cats rule. So if I press it and sure enough, your face rules and cats rule, it's working. So this is great. We can now extract the values for both of these, the username and password. The next thing is we want to like check to see if they're right. Now, obviously, like if you had a real like uh, website, you'd probably have like a, uh, a back end, like a, a database that stores all the usernames, passwords. We're gonna make a very simple thing. We're just gonna make a password for all users, one thing, and just be it, I love cats. As long as the person who says, I love cats, then they get into our website. So here's how we'll do it. We'll say if password, right? That's just what the user is, is equal to I love cats. Oh, we should make it one word. Let's make it all lowercase. If they have I love cats, then um, what's it called? We're going to alert them of the super secret. This your the password is correct. And then we'll give them another alert. The secret is that you are very cool. <gasps> oh, super secret. So we're going to get give them two alerts. If the password they entered is I love cats, they'll get these two. So let's see if this works. Let's run it. So it doesn't matter what I put in here, your face rules. And I'm going to enter in here. Um, I'm going to put like not, oh, not cat. I don't know. Actually, I'm going to put, I hate cats. I, actually, let's put, I love cats. I love cats. I'm going to put the right one in. So if you were to look at this, it'd say, I love cats. Let's log in. And look, it says the password is correct. You see that alert I got? Okay. And the second one, the secret is that you are very cool. <gasps> That's so good to know. Thank you for that secret. I guess no one does know that. And it is a secret from the world. Anyway, so that was pretty good. That worked, right? Now, if I were to put a different password in, like just like gobbledygook, nothing happens, right? Because I didn't put the right password in. So I think it's a good idea to actually like have a situation where like ones if I didn't get the right password in. Well, this is another thing. It's called an else statement. Else is like what ha What do you do if the this if statement, if that's not true, what do you do? And we do this thing called else. You put it right after that if. All right, so it's else and in parentheses, and we'll say alert the password 
you entered is incorrect. So now we've solved for both cases of this, right? So if the password is I love cats, which is the right password, it'll give him two alerts, the password is correct and tell him it's super secret. The else, if that's the case where like they entered the wrong password, it'll alert them the password you entered is incorrect. Now, let me just console.log the password again for you so you can see it. And so let's try it again. So I'm gonna enter in here your phase rules. Let's get username can be anything. The password here though is I love cats. Let's see what happens. The password is correct. The secret is that you're very cool. Oh, see, that ran there. Okay. And let's try the case where it doesn't work, where I put the wrong thing in. So I'm just going to put gobbledygook. Let's log in now. The password you entered is incorrect. That's all I get. So I do not get into the website. So that is how you would build this. Very simple, right? So just to kind of go over these things again, remember, we need references to those inputs. And then when I click the button, that is when I get the value of the username. So once I click it, I'm going to say username input. Remember, that's the reference dot value. And that gives me the value of that input. And then once you have the value, you can start doing fun things. You can like check to see if the passwords are correct. Um, if I'm really going to make something cool, maybe I'll like redirect them to a new page. So like, uh, uh, what, let's go to uh, Delta Math. This is so lame. I wish I could come up with better things. So uh, hold on one second. I had to like look up secret websites. I was worried about what might pop up. This one seems okay. So I'm going to get this one. So we're going to redirect them to this website. So if they get it right, let's redirect them to a new website. The way you do that is window.location uh, equals here. That's the new website. Let's run this again. So now I'm going to say uh, whatever, like real thing. I love cats. And check out what happens when I. And then I go to a new website. See, I got it. So that's it. Um, have some fun with this. And next class, we'll be making a, a kind of cool lab with this one. We might be making our, our very own quiz website. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Bye.